They said no inspect it at the source. So we contacted companies like Cotecna uh, to inspect before their ship. Then sometime later, they take it back to destination. So there's sometimes when you are caught, now it's source. It was destination. Your goods are in the middle of the high sea. Are you going to do what? Turn them back to the source to be inspected? <coughs> or the ship continues sailing? So it, it's always many times reactive. Yes, Steve. Um, just to like, learn from you, have you been able to separate um, the politics of Nigeria from your business? Because I believe that the business grows, there is a, there's some kind of a relationship. There's some kind of like interrelationship between politics in Nigeria and a growing business in Nigeria. I'll give you an example, maybe like MPA or something. So, how have you been able to separate the politics of Nigeria from your business? Uh, what have been the challenges and um, how have you been able to do it? Okay, um, there, for me there are three business models which you, you go through. First one and most basic is customer intimacy which is very predominant in Africa. I get uh, business from MPA, for instance, because my uncle is the decision maker there. Uh, and so he'll go and collect quotations and do it, but I will win. <laughs> you, you walk from the answer to the question. You get that odd call in the night and says, Chidi, by the way, you think you can do a $1,000 a bit less than your price? If you can, why don't you just bring in the revised, you know, so you win. That's customer intimacy. The other part of customer intimacy, which is positive, is that you can anticipate your customer's needs because you know him so well. And when in preparation meets opportunity, you have success. So you know, for instance, if you are so close to a family that the, the woman of the house is heavy, let's say you sell provisions, so you start ordering baby milk because somewhere, somehow, the baby will drop and it meets baby milk. <laughs> you know, so that's a stream of customer intimacy. So you can anticipate and be ready, even without a purchase order. So you are always... The second uh, uh, model of business is uh, customer excellence or service excellence. And service excellence is like, I don't know which are the mobile companies here, uh, but which is the best one? Verizon. Right? Verizon? <laughs> okay. Let's say Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you buy Verizon service because it's of excellent quality, not because your uncle works there or you have shares in Verizon. It's just a good quality. Like in, a, in, in my country, we have a DSTV, which is a cable television, that provides re a relatively much better service than the others. So that is service excellence. The other one is technology leadership. For instance, Nokia. Chances are that, well, I don't know about America, but Europe and Africa, out of every 10 phones, maybe seven of them is going to be Nokia phones. You know, that's, the technology is always uh, on, on the cutting edge. You know, so if you stay at the customer intimacy level and you don't take it beyond that to uh, service excellence or to technology leadership, then you make yourself beholden to politics and who is in power and how you can contribute to campaign you know, it's a vicious cycle because now if you contribute two dollars, somebody is contributing two million and twenty million, your two dollars is really not going to buy you any favor. So you have to contribute a considerable amount. But that's also a big amount of your profit. So we decided it's not a worthwhile thing to Yes? I wonder what you could elaborate a bit on if and if so, how the change the way you do your business with having the product be less important. Good. Um, remember, we're looking not just at the money, but we're also looking at what are the intangible benefits which we're going to get. With this third equity partner, which is Oris, we immediately saw benefits because they have invested in a technology company in South Africa called Sandbox. So Sandbox is into race flooring, cabling, uh, power systems, which is not a forty of ours. So we can very easily partner with Sandbox and uh, bring their solutions to complement. Uh, uh, uh. They also have a partnership with a company in Kenya called SST. Uh, and SST have unique strengths in some niche areas, uh, which 
we can partner with them to also offer to especially our telecoms. Um, we do have a training center. They do have a training center. There are some of the trainings that they do not offer that we offer and vice versa. So we can optimize in terms of the, uh, the sample or the, 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 this, the universal set and then you know, maximize the training opportunities. In addition to that, on the customer side, they've invested, for instance, in standard alliance insurance. So they recommend us to provide IT services to their customer base. Then they have a lot of knowledge because they've invested in technology companies in many places that they can bring, uh, the, the, the one that sits on our board can bring such uh, good, good uh, best practice, bad practices and mistakes that they've learned in other investments which they've made and we can learn from it without making those mistakes to learn. You know, so that was very uh, important for us, rather than just the money. Awesome. We've had a lot of time. Thank you very Thank much. You. My name is uh, Austin Okere. I am the co-founder and, and the CEO of the Computer Warehouse Group. The Computer Warehouse Group is a systems integration company in, in West Africa, probably the largest one. Uh, it has three subsidiaries in the group. Uh, there is a hardware company called CWL Systems, which provides uh, Sun, IBM, high-end infrastructure for uh, companies typically in, in the telecoms, banking, and oil and gas sector. There is also a software company called Expert Edge. Uh, Expert Edge is a partner to a global uh, software company called Infosys, where we have put the software in 10 of the 23 banks in Nigeria. And we also have a communications company called DCC Networks, uh, which provides communication predominantly to the same sectors that we have. Uh, we have 21 of the 23 banks that is running on our communication infrastructure at DCC. So Computer Warehouse is about a $100 million Turnover, uh, annual turnover company, uh, which just finished its uh, IPO and is looking to list on the Nigerian Stock Exchange uh, in 2010, later 2010 or early 2011. And we've just finished teaching the case in the classroom. Uh, can you tell us what's happened since the time of the case? Um, I, I'll first capture the snapshot of where we were at the end of the case where there was an offer on the table. Uh, by a private equity firm that wanted to put in $8 million for 25% of the computer warehouse group that comprised of all these three subsidiaries. Uh, and um, the issue was whether we should take that offer or whether we should uh, probably look at other options. And uh, the, working from the answer back to the question, we actually did not take that offer. Uh, we thought that we, the valuation could be better. And we also felt that the intangible benefits uh, in terms of the experience that the private equity firm will bring uh, was not significantly more than what we already had in, in, in terms of the IP in the company and the board of directors. Uh, eventually, we got a second uh, offer from another private equity firm called Orius, uh, and that gave us about um, twice the amount, which is $16 million, for the same 25%. In addition to that, uh, they had invested in IT company in South Africa called Sandbox. They had also invested in another IT company in Kenya called SST. Uh, and so we had opportunity to complement our offering with those two companies. They also introduced us to the, a lot of customers that are uh, not in the IT sector that's, that they had invested in, uh, where we pick, were picking up businesses from there. Uh, and I see also that they, they had nomination, their nominee on our board of directors very uh, vast in terms of business experience in, in our region and especially in IT. So I think um, it's been good from that point of view. And I must say that uh, part of what helped us to drive that bargain was that um, when we didn't take the offer from the previous uh, venture capital company, we proceeded to do an IPO uh, and therefore we had done our own valuation, evaluations uh, pre, pre when this latest IPO, uh, latest venture capital company came, uh, came forward to do their own due diligence. So there was a basis for us to question their numbers and agree a compromise, which is why we got a better value.
Have you been able to continue your very high growth rate? Um, for some curious reason, we have. 2008 was uh, our record year. Our fiscal year runs from January to December. So in 2008, we did the highest turnover and profit in our, in our group. We ended uh, with uh, a turnover of about um, 13 billion, which is roughly 100 million uh, dollars, and a profit of uh, 722 um, million naira before taxes and 650 uh, after taxes. Uh, what is significant is that in 2009, we seem to be doing much better than our record year of 2008 because um, by July in 2009, we've done a profit after tax of 810, given that the whole of 2008, January to December, we did 650 after tax. Uh, it's a phenomenal uh, growth over 2008, which was a record year. So that is uh, very interesting for us. So you haven't been negatively affected by the financial crisis? That will not be exactly correct because we're seeing a lag in the booking numbers. Uh, in terms of the bookings that we've already done that we're invoicing, we're seeing a lot of uh, growth in terms of the accounting. Uh, Francis, can I stop you? So what we need there is for you to say, uh, just so I know what question you're answering, so the XYZ economy has affected us in such a way. Okay. okay. Take that one over again. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, I wanted to ask about the financial crisis. Okay. Um, we've, we've seen um, a, a change in the macro financial uh, macro situation in Nigeria. The global meltdown has affected Nigeria, uh, especially in the area of margin facilities where people borrowed money to buy shares on the stock exchange and the shares have lost value. So the stock exchange has dropped in value in valuation. Uh, we've also seen crisis in the banking sector because they gave out these loans uh, and now they have to provide for the losses. Uh, so we've seen a slowdown in spending uh, and which is obviously affecting our business because you, you find that our core sectors that we, we get our businesses from are the banks, the telecoms uh, and the oil and gas. The oil and gas have slowed down because the oil price went uh, from a high of about 100 in late 2008 to somewhere in 50, and it's now about 72. But it's, it's still way below what the oil companies uh, projected. So we've, we, our businesses that were coming, are coming from there slow down. We've also seen a slowdown from the banks, which are sitting with big provisions for, uh, for losses that they have to make. But the growth area in the telecom is still very strong. Uh, in, in spite of that, we've seen accounting profits at a record level uh, 2008 was a record profit for us at whole year, January to December. We've done a profit after tax of uh, 650 million naira. Uh, in 2009, January to July, which is about seven months into the year, we've seen profit after tax of 810 million, which is much more than what we did for the whole year uh, last year, 2008. So if we project that forward, I think we'll be sitting with over a billion naira profit as compared to uh, 650 at the end of December last year. Uh, so it's been significant growth. I suspect that it's going to slow down in, in 2010 because the bookings uh, are slowing down. We can see a lag in the bookings. And as the company has grown, have you been able to maintain the entrepreneurial culture? Yes, we have, but with, um, with considerable difficulty. Uh, and that is um, to be expected. Uh, because for a small company, the face time with each division head uh, instills and, and, and consolidates the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, the less face time, the more removed uh, the leadership is from the body of the company. Uh, as we grow and, and grow very fast, it's, difficult, it's becoming more difficult to take our people through the entrepreneurial cycle and uh, acculturize them into that cycle. Uh, nonetheless, we still try to have what we call leadership for, forum meetings once a month. Uh, and we have levels of leadership. Uh, I can see immediately three levels to help with succession. So the original founders is one level. Then underneath is those that we've worked with for 10 years and above. 
Then this, the third layer of those who've been with us for five, uh, five years and above. And uh, admission into the leadership forum is not just by number of years you've spent, uh, that being a criteria, but of course, promise that you show as a leadership potential. And what are the greatest risks you see for your business right now? Uh, there are two major risks uh, that I see uh, if I talk about the micro level in the business itself. It's difficult to simulate hunger. And so uh, I see that as we're increasingly becoming successful, the, the hunger pangs are slowing down and, and that is, a, that is a, worry, a source of worry to me. We're beginning to behave like a, a prosperous company. Uh, we're, not, we're, we're not minding the details in terms of efficiency and cost effectiveness as much as we used to do. Uh, we have also seen a death of human capital because obviously the education system is also not um, uh, kept up with the foreign direct investments and the needs uh, of, of uh, qualified graduates. As I speak to you, the universities are on strike uh, and, and they've been on strike for three months. Uh, they, they resume and then take the exams. So it's like just learning by roots instead of opportunity to slowly develop. So these are the two on the micro level. On the macro level, obviously, policy inconsistencies. Uh, policies must change, but they must be fairly debated to see the impact and give enough, give, and businesses given enough time to mitigate before the change announcement is made. I also see the exchange rate fluctuation, uh, which makes it difficult to plan. I mean, we went from a Naira to dollar of 120 to 150. Uh, so those are the real challenges that we face, apart from the infrastructural uh, shortages. And overall, do you see the business climate improving, deteriorating, or staying about the same? I think uh, we've, seen, we've seen the worst. We, we've seen a situation where five bank managing directors have been sacked, along with their executive directors by the, uh, by the governor of the central bank, for gross will I say, uh, infractions. Uh, and that has brought up a, a more uh, awareness of, of the banks to make adequate provision. It's important that when a bank issues a statement of uh, uh, statement